Hello, hey everyone. Um, really excited today. Really, um, you know, we've been waiting uh, a few years really for this moment uh, where Stacks 1.0 upgrades to Stacks 2.0. And um, just really excited to be here presenting about Freehold. Um, and so without further ado, I'll get started. Let me put it on play. Cool. So my name is Patrick Stanley. I'm the founder of Freehold and we are a community of high impact hodlers. So we'll get into what that all means and what we've done. The agenda for today, we're gonna to discuss what is Freehold, what we've done so far, the importance of having skin in the game and how Freehold uses that concept, what's ahead for Freehold in the Stacks community, and also how you can get started. Cool, so first, Let's start with what is Freehold. So in order to describe what Freehold is, I'm gonna begin by describing what a freeholder is. A freeholder is someone who earns crypto for doing impactful work and holds that crypto. So they're kind of like the, uh, they're kind of like the polar opposite of, of a free rider. A free rider would be someone who uh, buys crypto but doesn't have a meaningful impact. They, they wait for, for sort of other people to provide the value um, or, or sort of um, uh, uh, kind of make the actual uh, token more useful, more valuable, et cetera. With freehold, a freeholder doesn't wait for other people to do work, they have an impact. The second thing about freehold uh, freeholders is when they unhodl or if they unhodl, they're out of the freehold. And this is, um, this is sort of like a proof of hodl access control to a community of like-minded people. Um, and we'll, we'll discuss a little bit more of that. And then thirdly, freeholders over time, they build a reputation for their earnings, their impact and their conviction. So um, we'll discuss all three of these things uh, throughout this presentation. So how do freeholders um, know what to work on? Well, we have this challenge board. Um, you can kind of see uh, <clears throat> as I scroll through it, there is different tasks people can do to earn, uh, to earn, right now they're earning Bitcoin, but soon they'll be earning stacks. But they can do all sorts of things as individuals or as a part of a community leading up to, um, you know, just something that's more impactful overall than, uh, than doing things as an individual. When I think about, you know, how, founders of companies operate typically um they'll you know hire 10 people five to ten people in a startup and those five to ten people are doing all the work so you can imagine like one business development person um has a lot of uh, pressure on them to make something happen in the freehold model there can be hundreds of people um you know doing business development or writing uh writing educational content or doing distribution etc and we'll provide some proving points for the freehold model uh, working within the Stacks community uh, in the in the coming slides. We also have this thing called HODL chat. Really what it is is just a Discord that is gated um, for only folks who have earned their way into the freehold and continue to HODL. So if you unhodl, you're out of the HODL chat. Um, I, you know, I'm not showing any of the messages in the HODL chat because only freeholders can see the messages. And we hold that fairly sacrosanct. Um, so you know, this is where we discuss, you know, taking over the world and, and, uh, and working together and just having fun together as a community. So let's get into what we've done so far. Um, so one of, the first, uh, one of the first major ways we work together as a community is we had a Stacks Testnet Mining Challenge where we have a goal to attract as many would be miners to the test net in hopes that um, these miners would be oriented to compete uh, in mining when mainnet arrives. So our, our sort of reach goal was 500 registrants. We thought this was something that was ambitious. And if we hit that, we'd be extremely happy and, you know, uh, from a standing start. We actually blew past that. Uh, like maybe not a couple times, maybe like a handful of times uh, uh, over. And so um, 
what happened was we actually got a combined 3,000 registrations at, uh, and also a combined 1,300 miners online during uh, a two-phase testnet challenge. Um, so we have some specific videos that are from the Freehold community. There's a couple of keychain videos, which in aggregate had 5,600 views. And then we also did a pair mining uh, video challenge where freeholders would uh, pair up with other freeholders who hadn't learned how to mine, and they teach each other how to do this. And then we distribute those videos all over the internet. So that got nearly 2,000 views. So we, you know, we think that those video views are kind of like um sort of like an undeniable uh, link to uh, the registrations and the miners being online. So we were really excited that we had an impact just for the testnet mining challenge here. Um, and recently we, you know, we paid out, we paid out this, um, we paid out the reward for this. And, um, you know, that was one of the first big prizes that our community earned as a collective. Um, so that we were really, really fired up about uh, what we accomplished there. So the other thing that freeholders do, well, actually, sorry, one sec. Um, so here's just an example of one of the videos, uh, you know, Jason, uh, Jason made, uh, he's a freeholder, obviously. Um, and this is just like a six minute video people use prior to entering into the contest. Um, so another thing that freeholders do is they create content and media. Uh, this is just super, super low hanging fruit, high impact work that can spread uh, and spread the message and educate people about stacks. Um, and you know, we have the belief that we're moving into shifting media landscape. Um, you know, people aren't just using PR firms to uh, to interact with legacy media to tell their stories. Um, they're increasingly telling their own stories and building their own media companies uh, and, and building their own distribution channels. You know, Manib, for example, has like almost 50,000 followers on Twitter. Um, sometimes a single tweet from him is more valuable than than uh, than an article from a traditional media source. Um, so we're really kind of leaning into the fact that, you know, anyone can be effectively a citizen journalist or a content creator and leveraging that fact with, um, leveraging that fact with, you know, kind of giving folks skin in the game. So we think it's now wise to create media communities rather than, ju than just media companies of pro stacks people. And these people educate and they tell a consistent story, but it's always in their voice. And importantly, they have, importantly, as differentiated by legacy media, they have skin in the game. They're, um, you know, you can trust them because they have skin in the game as opposed to not having a skin in the game and maybe playing more status games uh, rather than wealth games. So our thesis is that media communities are greater than media companies. And we're looking to prove that out over 2021, um, but just kind of like, um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, just describing that as our thesis going in. And we think the reason being is that content creators, you know, say like freeholders, for example, they have they have skin in the game. You know, there's this, uh, and, and I, have a, I have a slide on kind of like these two different mindsets of like West Coast and East Coast that I'll show in a sec, but, uh, as opposed to media companies, they don't necessarily have skin in the game. You could say they're uh, a quote unquote neutral arbiter, but um, we 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 feel that we feel that we can actually grow more value in, in this category of just like media creation um, by leveraging the fact that things like tokens do have do allow um, do allow for payment and do allow for you know having having some stake and some skin in the game. So some examples of some content that's been created so far, um, Friedger Mufke uh, created this really good, um, really good children's story that describes uh, stacks and stacking uh, in a kind of like a Hans Christian Andersen style uh, fairy tale. And this is really popular and I'm sure Friedger reads this every night to his genius children before they go to sleep. Um, but, you know, this is just the kind of like blog content we really love it's really um, uh, you know it's nice nice anime has nice animations good storytelling um, and and most importantly is educational so people are um, people are going from a standing start to actually learning what it is that Stacks does and how it makes Bitcoin more valuable etc. 
Um, another thing we do is video content. So, you know, any video platform we will utilize to educate uh, folks. This video in particular um, is by Andrzej. He's from Poland. Uh, he's one of the, he's one of the kind of most potent freeholders, and 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 he really kind of um he really is he su is super high impact, um, and he's going to do really well in freehold. So this video has like almost four. Excuse me. <laughs> this video has almost four thousand views, and you know he describes the white paper in very clear terms. Uh, he speaks in English and in Polish, and he's built a community. Just recently, he built a community of two hundred people that uh, were testing out mining just in the past week. I mean, this is this just goes to show you like your community can do a lot for you. Um, you just have to do a lot for your community, or or even even just a little for the community. Just you know, paying them out, paying them out a little bit, as as they sort of deserve, right? So that's uh, video content is just. Is is great, and we're gonna we're gonna grow both blog and video content uh, in twenty twenty one. And lastly, is meme content. So you know, I, I think Elon Musk famously said, "Whoever controls the memes controls the universe." Well, memes actually can be very educational. You know, they can tell a story. They can be comical. Um, they also signal community and like fun that's ha being had. And I know, like over the past year. The Stacks community has just gotten way more fun. It used to be very, uh, very uh, sort of like clinical uh, engineering based, um, not a whole bunch of um, bunch of memes. And now we're we're really kind of like um, really kind of like signaling our own self esteem um, through and, and and our own sense of humor and our sense of community through memes. And I think that's really important. Um, you know, memes memes build community, but they're also designed to spread a message. You know, so we have a we have like a handful of, of memes here that are you know kind of funny. Um, I think our meme game is is definitely like getting better every week. Um, and you know, we our, our memes have probably uh, probably I think by this point we probably crossed like a million views in terms of uh, people seeing our memes, and we we want to increase that um, and use memes for good, not for evil. Another thing, just. Just some like loose social engagement, uh, engagement um, metrics. I mean, there's been, as Lunar Crush uh, indicated uh, a couple weeks ago, you know, there's been an increase in social contributors. I think part of this is is from uh, from the freehold community and also the second order effects of the freehold community. There, um, you know, people people talk about stacks that aren't freeholders um, who who were introduced to stacks by Freeholders, and we think that's just a really good sort of behavior. Um, and then, of course, search term history on Blockstack has gone up over time since October, uh, around the time when freehold started. And then, you know, we we like to think we had an impact uh, there as well. So, you know, I've been talking a lot about importance of skin in the game. I wanted to provide some visuals just to drive home the point. Um. So before I was mentioning. Um, these stakeholder mindsets, and you know, West Coast on the West Coast, the stakeholder mindset is you can trust me because I have skin in the game. The East Coast stakeholder mindset is I have a conflict of interest because I own part of this. And these are these are just two very different mental models. And I think um, I think as this next decade, um, as we go deeper and deeper into this next decade, everyone's going to become a stakeholder. Everyone. Everyone's going to become an investor, and this West Coast mindset is really something that we think is going to become the prevailing mindset. And um, and we're we're um, we're essentially driving home uh, this concept with Freehold by uh, introducing uh, introducing some some tools to um, to allow that to be the case. Um, going back to the slide real quick. And as I mentioned before, the content creators have skin in the game. You can trust them because they're not a no coiner. They're not. They're not putting up headlines like Bitcoin is dead. We all know Bitcoin isn't dead. That's that is a that is a clickbait um, article that is uh, you know inform informationally uh, not very nutritious. Whereas you know the Winkle the Winklevoss, for example, the Winklevoss twins, you know they're they're quote tweeting articles like that. And saying Bitcoin is obviously not dead. 
those those folks are actually stakeholders who have skin in the game. You can trust them because they own Bitcoin and you know that they know their stuff. So like there's a huge contrast between uh, incentives and overall mindsets uh, when uh, when you have skin in the game versus when you don't. And you should be able to signal that you have skin in the game without revealing how much skin in the game you have. Uh, and so that's part of the reason that we developed HODL score. So HODL score is um, a way of directionally knowing uh, how much uh, impact people have had and also uh, how much conviction they have for um, for um, for a certain token. We're, we're demoing this with the Stacks token. So um, you can think of it as like, um, you know, the, the um, like the, the cousin of a credit score. So say a credit score assesses the liability side of um, the balance sheet. HODL score assesses the assets and earnings side of the balance sheet as measured in, as measured in, uh, uh, you know, cryptocurrency. So, like for example, we can in that first in the first uh, row, we can see you know amount earned. We can see how much has second row. We can see amount amount that's continued to be hodled. Third row, you can see okay how long since they began hodling. So you have some like some history. Fourth row. Uh, you can see uh, when was the last time they earned. So you can tell whether they've started to become a free rider and less of a free holder. And um, and lastly, uh, something we'll introduce in the future is kind of like a um, uh, HODL mix. So all these different inputs are actually uh, weighted in their own particular way. And they sort of um, get combined into an algorithm that spits out HODL score, which I think is a very directionally useful score to use. Um, so, you know, what we're trying to do is we're actually trying to, uh, as like a North Star at Freehold, we're trying to uh, rapidly increase the number of people who have over a 750 HODL score, which would be like, you know, 750 and above would be excellent. Um, and that way we're growing the number of, of high impact uh, Freeholders and um, kind of ignoring the free riders. So if you hold stacks and you don't do any work, we're not interested in we're not interested uh, in you unless you have a change of mind and you'd like to have an impact. Um, you know, if you want to go from a standing start to earning stacks right away, you can do so as well. And you can start building your HODL score. Eventually, we think um, if we can get enough people using HODL score, we think a lot of other projects are going to use that. We've already we've already been reached out to by about a half a dozen projects that um, are wanting to use Freehold um, for this purpose. Um, and we think we can actually um, grow new labor markets for people who earn in crypto where it previously didn't exist. So that's that's major, major, major. So what's ahead? Um, HODL score is going to start getting delivered to freeholders privately beginning in 2021. Uh, sorry, beginning in, yep, uh, beginning in February 2021. Um, we're continuously onboarding more educators and builders. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm interviewing them individually. I have 60 interviews next week alone. I've blocked up my schedule this week. Um, <laughs> and so next week I'm getting bombarded with new, new freeholders. Super excited about that. Like just love growing this community. Um, as mentioned, you know, getting a lot of demand from exchanges, projects, even companies to um, support them with freehold and and provide more opportunities for existing freeholders. So that's good. But we're, we'll move there once we have like a fully um, fully polished product and and we've we feel that we validated it with the Stacks freehold first. And lastly, uh, we're doing a referral program. So this is for freeholders only, giving out twenty five bucks in Bitcoin for each freeholder um, that gets newly. Uh, newly onboarded, and um, so, so far we've gotten we we actually launched that a couple of days ago, and already have had seventy referrals from uh, from our gang. Uh, so how you can get started? Very simple. Just go to joinfreehold.com, fill out the survey, and you'll get scheduled to speak with me. I'll speak with you um, very soon if you do so. So, anyways, thanks so much. Uh, really had a blast doing this, and uh, looking forward to the rest of the day's speakers. Appreciate it.